It's now time for the message by our scheduled speaker. Our speaker this morning is our spiritual leader, Pastor Reverend John Scott. And as I mentioned earlier, his theme is gratitude and appreciation. We listen with great anticipation, as usual, to hear what message Reverend John has for us today. Reverend John, over to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, beautiful spiritual worldwide family. A, jo a joy to add my own words of welcome to our Sunday morning celebration here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. I always say, in beautiful Jamaica. And I'm particularly joyful that a lot of uh, people who have not been able to come out for some time are out this morning in our sanctuary. Welcome to our heart, to my heart, and thank you for bringing your consciousness. You held it online all the months that you couldn't come out, and now that you are here, it is even more fulsome, and my heart overflows with appreciation, which is what I want to talk about this morning, the power of appreciation. You know, it is harvest time uh, in many countries and many cultures across the world, and here in Jamaica, our traditional churches, usually around about this time of year, have their harvest festivals. I was driving home yesterday from a class here at the temple, and I heard a church with an announcement, join us for our harvest festival virtually. And I thought, wow, and then they must be reaping virtual fruits, which of course, as we know in metaphysics, that is perfectly possible. So it is harvest time, and it's not something new, from ancient times and in cultures all across the globe, people have celebrated the harvest, performing rituals of various kinds and of thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth. Of course, those of us on the spiritual path known as New Thought, which is a misnomer, there's nothing new about this thought. It's as ancient as human life itself. But it's new because it is now the answer we believe to today's world and to the, the challenges that face the peoples of the earth. So those of us in New Thought know that we don't have to set aside a special day or days to celebrate and give thanks because we make every day a day of thanksgiving, don't we? But it is still good and it's still wonderful to have rituals of thanksgiving such as celebrated in, in the United States later on this month and in Canada, they did one earlier, and always for the Temple of Light happens on the first Sunday of July. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. It is wonderful. I have a lovely poem of appreciation for all things Caribbean written by a, a, a poet called Agnes Maxwell Hall, and it is from a book titled Life Prayers from around the world. Please listen with your heart. For honey, pepper, leaf green limes, pagan fruits whose names are rhymes, mangoes, breadfruit, ginger roots, granadillas, bamboo shoots, chocho, ackees, tangerines, lemons, purple congo beans, sugar, okra, cola nuts, citrons, hairy coconuts, fish, tobacco, native hats, gold bananas, woven mats, plantains, wild thyme, pallid leeks, pigeons with their scarlet beaks, oranges and saffron yams, baskets, Ruby guava jams, turtles, goat skins, cinnamon, allspice, conch shells, golden rum, black skins, babel, and the sun that burns all colors into one. We thank thee. My friends, to appreciate means to esteem highly, doesn't it? 
And it's interesting because our Rastafarian brethren and sister in here in Jamaica, who are very mindful of the undertones and hidden meanings in words, use the word appreciate love instead of appreciate. Because appreciate sounds too much like how we say hate without aspirating the H. And we don't want to appreciate you, so we appreciate, instead we appreciate love you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. So that's just a little bit of local culture for you. Next time you want to appreciate somebody, don't hate them, love them, appreciate love. <laughs> Ernest Holmes, who gave the world the great teaching known as the science of mind and spirit, writes, and I quote, when we constructively praise and creatively bless, life abounds with love, peace, and joy. How true. Life abounds with love, peace, and joy when we creatively bless and find things to appreciate love in, that just are spread before us day and night in our world. Dr. Holmes explains, um, as, and I quote, there is a law common in all people which responds to every man's belief in life. A law common in, common in all people which responds to our belief. Remember the master said it is done unto you as you believe. And Holmes says it's done to us at the level of our belief. He says no man can be happy who lives in a continuous state of condemnation of people conditions and things. You know those people who they never have anything good to say, it's always a complaint. We must, Home says, learn to praise and not condemn. I love that song written this morning, the our praise song by Steve Golding. Praise God. Let him do his best for you. In fact, let him do your best for you. Because when you act, it's God acting through you, not I, but the Father within. That's who is doing the work. So praise God and let him do your best for you. Praise God, because God always sees you through. Praise God and then do the best you can. Praise God, because he is the brotherhood of all mankind, the brotherhood of all humankind, the brother. This is the link, my friends. This is the matrix that, that, that just links all of us together in one harmonious whole. So this is why from ancient times, humans have praised and blessed the harvest. Now, although we may not all be farmers, there's another kind of planting that we do, isn't there? There's a kind of planting which involves us planting the seeds of thought or scattering them to the wind in the fertile soil of our subconscious minds. And this planting also brings a harvest. You know, I, I was saying in, in quiet moments in the garden last week, I'm a lover of avocado pear, and there's been a, a, an absolute abundance of avocados this, this season. And the interesting thing about planting a seed is that, you know, if you plant an avocado seed, you don't get back one pair, do you? No. You get back thousands over the years. So if you, whatever you plant, and the master said, as you sow, so shall you reap. So if you plant a seed of good in that fertile soil, you're not going to reap just one good. You reap enough good to share, to spare, to, to give away, to... So it's, it's in such abundance that you can ha you, your consciousness can hardly contain it. And if you reap uh, a seed of malice and discontent and superstition and regret, what do you reap? A harvest of the same. So we need to be very mindful of what we are planting. And so... I want us to think about this harvest this morning. Joel Goldsmith, that monumental teacher of modern mysticism, recommends that this time of year, harvest time, is a good time for we true students, we people who are practicing to live this science of mind and this teaching, 
it is a good time for us to consider the harvest that we are gathering into our spiritual storehouses. And so my friends, do you have a storehouse of the fruits of spirit? Or do you have a storehouse full of regret and resentment and broken dreams and mistakes that you have made? It is very important. So Goldsmith writes in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, and I quote, if your harvest has been scant, engage in a little soul-searching introspection to see where you have, been, you have been going, you have been failing. And if it is abundant, rejoice in the greater awareness of the presence which has made this possible. But he says, always evaluate your progress in terms of spiritual fruitage. I love that concept, the fruits of spirit, so that your life can be, can be evaluated by you. Nobody else is judging you. There is no God sitting down in heaven, you know, with blue eyes and a long white beard on the clouds, writing down every time you have made a mistake. You evaluate your own uh, performance. You look at what you're harvesting, and if you don't like what you are reaping, think again about what you are planting today. And what is this spiritual fruitage about which Goldsmith speaks, my friends? What is this fruitage that we need to be cultivating? Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 lays it out for us, and I quote, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against which there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, against which there is no law. Nothing can withstand those fruits of Spirit. When you, when you plant those and they are growing in abundance and you are reaping the fruits of Spirit, your life is enriched in absolutely wonderful ways. And so, are you planting the fruits of spirit? If your harvest is going to be one of love, joy, peace, and goodness, are you tending those crops with joyful anticipation, giving thanks for the harvest even before the fruits appear? Because that's what we need to do. Goldsmith maintains that the only way to taste of the fruit of the spirit, and listen to this, the only way to taste of the fruits of the Spirit is through the Word of God. And now a lot has been talked about and has been written about the Word of God. The Word of God which is in the midst of us. Mm -hmm. We are told in John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what is this Word? It is not something, my friends, that is written in a book, any book. It is not something that you can learn by rote and rattle off to impress people that you know the Bible and you know scripture or, or that you are well read. The word of God comes only in the still small voice that speaks to you and to me when we take the time to be still and to know that I am God. The word of God comes to you in the stillness of your soul. And that's why, my friends, it is so important to practice this stillness. And I never forget, well, I, I, I meditated for many years, but before I started meditating, I was really hyper. If I didn't meditate daily, twice daily, you would be scraping me off the ceiling. You know, I'm, I'm up there all the time. And I said to Reverend Elmer once, I wasn't yet even in training to be a practitioner, let alone a minister. It was the furthest thing from my mind. You know, and I said, why am I just so hyper and so you know, vociferous and vigorous? And she said, well, you need to practice being still, dear. So I practiced being still. I sat there for three minutes. And I said, but not, I may not feel nothing. I may not hear nothing. Something wrong with this woman, you know, she saw a lot of things which we don't understand. She lucky, she all right, you hear? It wasn't until I learned to meditate. And you know, friends, it doesn't happen immediately. When you start practicing 
stillness. At first, it may take a little time to, for you to get into the rhythm of it. And I can tell you, I'm, this is just speaking personally, please don't take it as a, a sexist comment, but I find women or ladies find it harder to be still. I have a theory as a behavioral scientist, it's because they are socialized to be doing five million things at one time, you know, the multitasking, looking after the children, looking after the house, looking after a meal, planning what to be done for school tomorrow. Um, women, women always have something to do. We men, we go to work and we work hard because we have to provide, and then we come home and we veg in front of the television. We can just let go, you know. Uh, honey, what's for dinner? Mm. Hello, it didn't, it wasn't on the stove cooking itself, you know. That's so right. women find it harder, I have found in my experience, to just learn to give themselves the gift of stillness. And so I want to recommend to you, if you don't already know how to meditate, make an appointment and come and learn. And if you are a meditator, practice, practice, practice. You have to let go even once a day and give yourself 20 minutes just for you to listen for that still small voice which is, which is the word of God in your life and your affairs. It is very, very important. So this word which abides in us will help you to bear the fruits of spirit richly. But here's the thing, friends. You need to practice. In Luke 4, verse 4, we read that Jesus, the way Shoah, responded to his urge to use his power to satisfy his hunger during the so-called temptations, and he used his mind, quoting the Old Testament scripture, which is found in Deuteronomy, which declares, and I quote, man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. So if you want to hear those words in the stillness of your soul, you have to take time to be still. Goldsmith writes, and I quote, the word coming to human consciousness becomes flesh and life in the outer realm be begins to transform itself into the pattern of spiritual demonstration. The word of God, which you have received in your consciousness, becomes the flesh of your body. It becomes the substance of your pocketbook, your bank accounts. It becomes the activity of your business. And above all, it becomes the bond in your human relationships. And my friend, relationship is the context within which all work gets done. I have two friends who have just started the practice of every evening before they sit down to dinner, they tell each other three things that they appreciate about each other. I told them they must call it appreciate love. They don't want to hate each other. And you know, the first evening, the first thing the husband said was, one thing that I appreciate love is that I came home this evening and you weren't in a bad mood. <laughs> no, you see, sometimes we are at, at work, busy providing for the family. You know, that's what we do, we men. The, the mother, the woman, the, the wife, the girlfriend, the partner, she's at home, she's not just, you know, thinking deep thoughts and listening to the radio all day, I hope. She's also working online. She's also looking after children. She's also looking after a house. This is real work, I can tell you. And sometimes when, she, when you come home, she's at the end of her tether. She just wants somebody to talk to. Not to solve any problems, just to listen to her and hear how her, how her day was. And so before you pick up the sports page or you fasten yourself to the television to listen to the sports news, spend a little time appreciating loving your partner that has been keeping the home and the home fires burning. And you spend a little time embracing him too. So that this is a mutual 
practice of looking for the goodness in each other. And so here's your assignment. You know, this, this, word of, of, this word of God has been in my consciousness, this idea that it is spiritual food and that it is that which we need to, to ingest and digest in order to enrich our lives and to have a rich harvest. I was in a class last week. We are doing Ignite Your Life with Bible Wisdom, and we had this wonderful discussion about whether we listen to the news or we don't listen to the news. And I was saying, yeah, you can listen to the news, but don't start your day with a, a, a breakfast of the COVID results and all the things that have happened and mostly it's negative. You very seldom see something which, which is inspiring and you know, the wonderful things Jamaicans are doing and being appointed to high levels all over the world. We have a Jamaican uh, coming to be ambassador for the United States to Jamaica. You now and then you see that and you say, wow, yeah, man, Jamaica, I'm going tired to see we face. But normally the news is about the negative. So I was saying, don't start your day with a diet of the negative. Start your day with the word of God. That word which is made flesh in the life that you are creating for yourself, for your family, for your, for your, your friends, for the world at large. And so your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, as I always say, is to read the Lord's Prayer every morning if you don't already do so. And when you get to that wonderful line that says, give us this day our daily bread, when you get to that line, give us this day our daily bread, really meditate on that. Remember that daily bread is the word of God in your consciousness. It is the staff of life. It is the staff of your life. And so just stop when you get to give us this day our daily bread. And when you get there, just say, and I quote, Feed me, Lord, with your word, which is the substance of life. Feed me, Lord, with your word, which is the substance of life. Can we say that together? Feed me, Lord, with your word, which is the substance of life. And having done that, start to practice more appreciative love in your daily living. And friends, that word which is the substance of life, I, I, tell, my, I tell my classes, before you read anything, including the newspaper, or watch the news, or listen to the news on the radio, just say, feed me, Lord, with your word. Let me, let me listen to this news through the eyes and through the ears and through the heart of someone that sees as God sees. Not the grime and not the, the things that are unpleasing to our hearts. Let us look at people through the eyes of God and see the truth and the radiance of their spiritual magnificence. So practice more appreciation, more appreciative love, and I wanted to share with you just four ways that author A.J. Lingerman um, suggests that we can do this. A.J. Lingerman, I found this article by, by him in a Unity magazine many, many years ago. And because I keep journals, um, I, I, I saved it. So Lingerman says, and I quote, first, become more interested in persons for themselves. Instead of attaching labels to others, Choose to look at the jewel that shines at the center of every life. Instead of attaching labels to people, you know, I've stopped calling people gunmen, you know, two gunmen held up somebody in the news. They're not gunmen, they're people with guns who have forgotten who they are. And you know, when Reverend Michael and I were at the um, adult correctional facility in downtown Kingston regularly, we haven't been for the last 18 months because of the pandemic, but in every class, you always have at least one person who is cynical. Now, we're not there to convert people to any kind of, of religion. Um, we're there to, it's a, it's a personal growth uh, class. And so, always, 
we find one or two people who, who are a bit cynical about life being so wonderful, you know? And we had one lovely person, lovely, 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 lovely gentleman, who was very, very engaged with us and, and very attentive. And after about the third class, he said, you know, you and Reverend Michael giving us the, the frankincense and marina and it smells sweet. But what I'm looking for is the gold. I want the gold, not the frankincense and myrrh. So I looked him in his eyes. I looked into the eyes of a man who is a good man. I looked into the eyes of a man who had forgotten his godness or perhaps had, had never been told, you are beloved of the Father. You are God's son. You are worthy, valid, valid, and authentic as a human being. I looked into those eyes and I said to him, you are looking at the wrong place enough. The gold is within you. And you see me, John Scott, I'm here mining for it. I want to find the gold that is in your soul. He was speechless. The English say God stopped. He just didn't know what to say. He said, you're looking for gold in me? I said, yes, it's there. He said to them, before these 12 classes, I intend to be enriched by it. Wow. So look for and be interested in other people just for themselves. Two, develop more spontaneity by enjoying the process of contact with others, not just the outcome. So you know, you have a meeting and there's a, there is an agenda and you want to get to the outcome. But also enjoy the interaction with people. Make every conversation a holy discussion about the goodness of life. Appreciate love the moments that you are spending with other human beings in co-creating a world that works for all. In, in, that, in, the moment spent improving a company, the moment spent uh, planning and, and just being a part of something bigger than yourself. So enjoy the journey, not just the destination. Three, expand and diversify your own interests. You're never too old. Find something to new, new to experiment with, to experience and to learn. You know, a lot of times people say, I want to serve the church. And when, as soon as I have the time, Reverend Tommy used to say, dear, don't tell me as soon as you have the time, you're already in eternity. So, make the time to be involved. Our strategic plan, which is on its way to you this week, you are going to, you're going to have it this week, it's just a wonderful opportunity to become involved in creating the future for our Center for Spiritual Living. And I invite you to read it with love. Say, say as you read it, Father, reveal to me your word, which is the substance of my life, and direct me to where I can be involved. And I want to assure you that as you give yourself in service to creating this, this amazing movement called the Science of Mind and the, the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, you will in turn be so enriched and so ennobled and so creatively fulfilled that you will amaze yourself at the harvest of the fruits of spirit that you will be reaping to the honor and glory of God. Four, and finally, if you don't already do so, begin a gratitude journal. You can do it in your regular, your regular um, journaling, but I have a separate book. I just got a half cover notebook, and every day I write down five things that I am grateful for. And it doesn't have to be big things, maybe just for the gentle rain that fell last night on my newly planted impatience. It may be for an avocado that somebody left on my doorstep. Um, it may be for the fruits of the spirit, the love, the joy, that friends and family and even strangers bring into your life. It may be for the grace of God that shows up. You know, once I was very angry at the supermarket because I had ordered a cake and when I went it wasn't ready and I was late for the birthday party and it, nobody knew it, you know. And when people don't, in organizations, don't deliver, they get this blank look on their face. The screen comes down and... <laughs> It's not me you did talk to. I said, I know I didn't talk to you, but, but your name, name in the business. And so I was really angry. And you know, when you're angry, you talk at a, a higher decibel. 
And I said, well, what time, I, what time am I to come back? And she said, boy, it's going to take hour and a half to cool and so much to ice and every she gave me a time. So I said, and who am I to ask for when I come? And she said, ask for Grace. Ask for Grace. Ask for, her name was Grace. My God, the universe has a sense of humor. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. This woman looking at me, a pastor, and telling me, ask for Grace. I nearly, I nearly kneel down into the supermarket and I'm free. But I waited till I got to the car. Ask for grace. You see, when you become still and you listen to that still small voice, it will fill you <laughs> with that substance out of which all life is created. So my friends, I want to conclude this encouragement by expressing my appreciative love for every one of you. I can't tell you what it means to me to stand here and look at you, at the love shining from your eyes on a Sunday morning, or to know that you are out there in the virtual world, and that your consciousness is upholding me and upholding all those people who hunger and thirst after the righteousness of the law of mind and the science of this amazing teaching known as the science of mind and spirit. So thank you. I want to know that you to know that you are a vital, valuable, God-blessed, prospered part of this great movement of truth. The world and this center and my own ministry wouldn't be the same without each and every one of you. Each of you in, in your uniqueness. You see, when I look at you, I see the jewel that is at the center of of every single human soul. It is there. I don't care how buried it is between in, in the vicissitudes of life. I don't care whether it's in the prison at Tower Street or it is in King's House. Wherever you go, look for that jewel and be the farmer that reaps the fruit of spirit and so that your storehouse is full of the fruitage of God. Let that word be your meat and your drink. It is, when Jesus said, this is my body, that was what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about eating his flesh. He was talking about this substance that we have available to us is our meat and drink. And it is that which we can use to create a world that works not just for ourselves, not just for the people in our tribe, not just for the people who have our likeness and who check for the things we check for, it is for every single soul upon the, upon the planet. So, I want you to say with me, I honor and appreciate love myself. Can you say that? I, I honor, honor and, and appreciate love myself. myself. My presence on the planet is healing the world. My, My presence, presence on, on the, the planet, planet is, is healing, healing the, the world. world. I am making a difference. Remember, there's a comma after I am. I am making a difference. Turn to someone near you and say, I honor and appreciate love you. I honor and appreciate love you. Thank you for making a difference to the person. Thank you for making a difference. My friends, I honor and appreciate love you. Thank you for making a difference. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend John. Another inspiring message again. Could we give him another round of applause, please? We got a feast. That was a cornucopia of blessings, as it were. We heard a new word, appreciate love, instead of appreciate. We heard, and this I particularly liked, a new poem about the, the beauty and the loveliness of the fruits of Jamaica. We heard that Dr. Holmes tells us that life abounds with abundance when we show gratitude. We heard that when you praise God, 
he will do your best for you. When you praise God, you will get your best. Reverend John asked the question, what is in your storehouse? Are there positive or negative feelings and emotions which create your consciousness? What's in your storehouse? And another question, are you planting the fruits of spirit? Is that what you're planting? Because what you plant is what you get. And among the many bits of advice that we got was keep a gratitude journal. Sounds simple, but it's very, very effective for boosting, not only boosting your spirit, but boosting the wealth, the abundance that is in your, in your life. As simple as it sounds, a gratitude journal. 